Hello, hello, Robert Mwando here and welcome to Edify. If you have been following Edify in the recent past, you might have realized a pattern in the topics I have been covering. I have covered what I like to call back to the basics Christianity. Topics like overcoming sin, effective prayer, fellowship, and today I will talk to you about growing in the habit of studying the Holy Scriptures. Yes, reading your Bible. I have read and heard some influential persons lay claims that the Bible is an archaic textbook that needs to be replaced with more contemporary literature. I like to use the analogy of vintage cars. A vintage car in the eyes of a modernist is good for the scrapyard. But to a vintage collector, old is priceless. Timelessness is one attribute for measuring true value. And the ancient word of God is timeless. God transcends time and space. And because the Bible is God's word, the word too transcends time. In the book of John chapter 1 verse 1 to 5, the Bible says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Also, uh, the psalmist in Psalm 138 verse 2 says, I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. So we know from scripture that by his word, God created the universe. The psalmist says, God has magnified his word above his name. If so, you and I do well to take him at his word and take deliberate effort to know what he says about everything. God being the creator of all things has provided a perfect user's manual in the form of the Holy Bible for us to know how to operate correctly. This is why I have dedicated time to record this episode to share with you 10 keys to studying and understanding the Bible correctly. Number one, pray for God's inspiration and guidance. Before you engage with the Word of God, ask Him, the one who inspired the human authors, to inspire you. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Number two, be humble in learning God's Word. Don't bring human intellect and the theories of men to try and fit into the scriptures. Number three, let the Bible interpret itself. This is self-explanatory. Again, human logic will not fit into the divine wisdom. Number four, know the context of the passage. Do not try to appeal to your culture. Number five, know the historical background of a certain passage. Number six, know the original words used. Number seven, rightly divide the word. Second Timothy chapter two verse 15 says so. Dividing the word means studying the Bible by topics. It's helpful to concentrate on one topic at a time rather than jumping from one topic to another. Number eight, read the whole Bible. Do not only focus on what you find controversial or difficult for your understanding. Let the whole counsel of God so richly indwell you. Number nine, compare different translations. Some translations use less complicated language. And number 10, use Bible study aids. These will help you see the perspective others have. It may differ from your own perspective, but it's vital in making conclusions about a subject or a topic. How does one develop a consistent habit of studying the Bible? A, create a schedule. It's important to have a time set aside for you 
to study the Word of God. B. Set the right environment or place to study the Bible. An environment that avoids any form of distractions. C. Enlist the help of others. You need to have accountability partners who will hold you accountable and who you can give feedback about what you have learned from the, the scriptures you have studied. D. Use a daily Bible reading plan or guide. It's important because it helps you to be consistent in what you're studying. E. Be consistent. It is said that for a habit to form, you need at least 21 to 28 days of repetition. So don't read your Bible one day and then shelve it for the rest of the week and expect that you will be consistent and, and you will be a good uh, student of the Bible. F. You do well to find a fellowship of believers who have the same quest in studying the whole counsel of God. You might want to consider a Bible-believing and teaching church to belong to. And G, which is uh, last but not least, most importantly, you do excellently when you apply what you have learned from the Word of God to how you live your life daily. In Luke chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus said, More than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. The word keep doesn't mean putting on the bookshelf to gather dust. Rather, it means to obey, observe, follow, guard, and practice continually. The Edify scripture for today is James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25. I'll read from the New King James Version. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. God bless you.